Hi, I'm Mick Yeovan from Egg and World and Shooting Country TV. Uh, I'm back down in my old stamping ground in Derbyshire. Uh, I was coming down to do a bit of foxing. Uh, and Ben, the landowner here, found out I was uh, I was coming down, so he asked me if I could take care of a few squirrels. Uh, this is the land I used to take care of before, before I left, and uh, well, I'll let Ben tell you. You carry on, Ben. Well, yeah, so I found out that Mick was coming down, and I thought, what great opportunity it would be to let him take care of what I used to take care of, because since he's left, there's been a massive increase in the squirrels. So I kindly thought, well, while you're here, can you do me a bit of free work? Absolutely. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah. I thought, not a problem with that. I like to not use Mick, but I like to use him where I can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so hopefully we'll be down in the woods, uh, we'll get these sorted out. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I've been down already, set some feeders up, got the feed out, uh, and there is some down there, there's quite a few since. Uh, it's been a while since I've been here, like you say, but it's good for Ben to uh, to ask me to come down and have a look again, and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll get them sorted this afternoon. See the squirrel in that holly bush down there. And that was like another one over there. Yeah. Got two squirrels down there. The problem is they're well away from the feeder. <laughs> so we're gonna try and get down there to get onto them, but we'll try and give them a wide berth, give them a bit of time. We'll go to the feeder, we'll get into the hide, and we'll pick them off one by one. Bingo. Did you want that one? That was out in the open. It was rushing around by the bottom of a fallen tree. It moved away and it got its back to us. So I got down on the ground so it never saw any movement. Sat in a tree, it realised something was happening. Just managed to get the scope on it. 100% identified it as a grey with the with monocular. There's no reds up here. None whatsoever. There's never a problem but you cannot I can't emphasise enough that you, you must, you must identify 100% what you're shooting at. Up in Cumbria, never shoot under thermal. Uh, you could, you could do it, but like to be safe, you'd never know. You could blink an eye, and a red could replace a grey, and you could take a shot and regress it for the rest of your life. So anyway, grey down. I'll go and get it. We're in the hide now. We've, uh, we've made it through. We've uh, picked a couple up on the way down. Uh, just had a torrential downpour. And got soaked to the soaked to in the outer layer of the jacket. It's keeping me quite dry, so that's all right. But uh, it's been to leak down the neck, so we've had a bit of a nasty downpour. Uh, we're overlooking the hide. The hide's about 35 yards away. Uh, we're spotting with a the thermal spotter, the Axiom. Uh, put the, the pulsar Axiom and we're confirming everything with a monocular, a day, like a day scope. Uh, 
it's not too bad here. There's no, like I said before, there's, there's no reds in this wood, no reds in this area at all. Uh, so you're quite sure it's safe shooting with the thermia because we've got the thermia scope as well. <clears throat> but just being sensor and I confirm everything with the day monocular. Uh, then we can be uncertain. If we're doing this in Cumbria, then uh, we won't be doing that at all. We'll be probably not shooting the thermal. If you are shooting the thermal, just make sure 100% certain what, you, what you're shooting at. Uh, still a bit of rain. Once this rain's cleared, the schools will start coming back out again. It's getting to that sort of time when they will be starting to come back out to feed. So uh, it's just the uh, same old story. Just set about waiting and they'll be out again. Like I said, we've had a few already. Uh, there should be a few more on, on, a few more on the menu for this. Right, that was a nice little one tool there. Uh, I just popped my head up from the hide and I looked up high, up high level, I could see a heat source right in the corner of the tree. Uh, luckily, I think we've got it all on, on video as well, but uh, I managed to pick the first one, it was hanging on, and you could see it was hit, hit, but it was just hanging on like they do, and you can see the blood dripping from it. The one next to it was just stayed exactly where it was, and I managed to take that one as well, and that's dropped right into the woods, so that was a nice little one tool. Uh, quite, uh, quite happy with that, yeah. the hollies down at the bottom. I came across the area with a spotter. I could see one or two running around the background. Come back with a gun. It was in the hollies, right to the bottom. And it slowly bounced its way up, come to the feeder. Another one down, well into double figures now. Not bad for a few hours. The downpour continues for quite a while, but what we're going to do now is I'm going to pick a few up. There's quite a few up there at the moment underneath the tree. Uh, not sure exactly how many, lost count after a while. But we're going to pick them up, uh, see how we are, and uh, have a bit of a count up. quite an eventful few hours. Uh, we ended up with 14. There's some very youngsters from, from the last batch of, uh, the last kits from the last batch. There's some kits from early on this year and then there's some full-grown adults. Uh, 
there's still quite a few knocking about, I'm sure there's, but the rain sort of killed it for a while, and then as soon as the rain stopped, just like that, they're back on it again, and we, we were just non-stop. Uh, and I do believe if we had a, a normal day, no cameraman, no offence to anybody, uh, we'd be well, well into, 20, into, into the 20s. But everything's worked superb. We've used the, uh, the Air Arms S510 tactical again in 2.5 FAC. Some shots were quite long. We've taken them out up to 50 yards, I think. Uh, some nice shots out of trees. Uh, quite a few around the feeder, so the feeder's been working. I actually went out and bought myself a big bag of peanuts. And that really brings them in. Uh, it seems to put, send them into a feeding frenzy uh, once they get the taste for the peanuts. So th that really worked well. A uh, bit more equipment to talk about, and that is the, the Pulsar uh, XM30F Axion 2 spotter. Uh, an absolute must for these conditions. You, you can see the squirrels coming from way out in the woods. Uh, we're using a the thermal scope today. Uh, uh, and this is not something I'd normally do, in, uh, like in Cumbria when I'm on the red squirrels conservation work. Uh, you've got to be able to tell the difference between a red and a grey, and the thermal will not give you that. So down here there's no reds. I think we've mentioned this a couple of times already. There's no reds down here, so there's no danger of that. But what I'll do as a, as a belt and braces job is I've got my day monocular, which will pinpoint them out and tell you exactly that it is a, it is a grey, not that there's any doubt down here. Uh, I guess it's a bit like foxing. Uh, you go out foxing at night, you're using a the thermal for fox, but sometimes you can see a fox and it has happened, people shoot a dog when it's got off the lead, it's been away. I've seen it myself, I've had dogs jumped out at me from through fences. Thought it was a fox, took me time, identified it and realised it was a dog off a lead. Uh, but you can never be too careful, especially when squirrels are concerned, especially in areas where there's reds. Uh, the equipment has worked superbly. We've used the RWS uh, Super Domes in 2.5. Everyone's been spot on. The scopes work perfectly. That's the, it's the Pulsier Alien uh, Thermion uh, XP50 Pro LRF. The range find is an absolutely fantastic piece of kit. So accurate, you can ping the button, one press on it, it gives you an instant readout of what the, the, the distance is, the yards or meters, whatever you want. A long press will hold it and it'll carry on scanning wherever you're looking at. So that works really well. Record facilitate, just one push button on the side and cameras as well. And the zoom is on the other side of the, uh, of the menu dial on the top. Main button on, on the back of the LRF unit. One thing I've got to mention is that uh, the, the, the focus ring, instead of being on the end lens, it's on the side and it's a dial. I prefer that rather than, because I find sometimes on the scopes, uh, the thermal scopes, it can be a little bit tight and you sort of twisting to get it round, but that works a treat. It's also ambidextrous. There's a dial on both sides for the left-handers. Uh, 5,000 quid. So, but uh, you've got to work out for yourself whether that's worth it or not. The the, the, the XM, that's just over a thousand quid. So you're talking you know, together like 6,000 quid worth of stuff there, but uh, th this is obviously the cheaper end of the range of the spotters. That's the higher end of the range of the scopes. Uh, but that's about it. I mean, everything's worked superbly. I'm, I'm really happy. It's nice to be back down in my old stomping ground. Uh, I really love this wood. Uh, big thanks to Ben for inviting me down to sort these squirrels out because I know they've had some problems. Uh, and it's just, it's the one thing I miss about Derbyshire, and that is this particular little wood. Anyway, thanks for watching. I appreciate it, guys. Uh, I guess it's soon we come up to Christmas, so I hope you have a good one, and uh, we hope to catch you in the new year. I'm going to wrap these things together now and start uh, heading back to the truck. Thanks a lot. For, thanks for watching and thanks a lot. Bye.